kugamba ndi kati tukola eh wala zimeze Uh, good morning everyone hope you are fine there uh, my name is Magala Rashid and I'd like to discuss with you some senior theory chemistry here our topic for today is chlorine and its compounds it's a topic which I'm sure none of you has covered uh, I, want, I thought about to discussing sulfur and its compounds, but then I realized that some of you have the work, while others may not be having it. So we decided that we have we look at a topic which we know nobody has learned about, and this is chlorine and its compounds. Chlorine is the seventh element in the periodic table. I mean, seventeenth element in the periodic table. It's one of the halogens the group seven elements atomic uh, number of chlorine atomic number of chlorine is 17 then the mass number which you can also for call uh, Atomic mass is 35 or 37. Remember, chlorine has two isotopes. We have chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. But the most important thing here is the atomic number of chlorine. The electron configuration. Of chlorine is. 2 to 8 to 7, and then the electronic structure of chlorine yeah, is done like this. We have the nucleus, which nucleus has protons and neutrons. Then we have the shells, the innermost shell, the second shell, and then the third the Shell. So in the innermost shell, we have three electrons. Uh, we are using a process to represent uh, electrons. The next shell has eight electrons. And then the outermost shell has seven electrons. When you count these, you get 17 electrons, 17, and then 17. So chlorine is in group, uh, chlorine is in group 7 of the periodic table because its atom has 7 electrons in the outermost shell, 7 electrons in the outermost shell. So the number of electrons in the outermost shell is what determines the group number. So chlorine is in group 7. Then chlorine is in, is in period, period three of the periodic table. Uh, what we use to determine the period to which the element belongs is the number of digits written when you're writing the electron configuration. So we are having three digits, two, eight, and seven. And so the number of digits at the same time is the number of shells in the atom of, the, of that element. And at the same time, it's the period to which that element belongs. So we have three digits, one, two, three. We have three shells, one, two, three. And then for this element, it belongs to period three. Because its atom has three shells. Uh, the number of shells again is the number of digits 
that you write when you're writing the electronic configuration. Uh, chlorine is a non-metal. All these are facts about chlorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chlorine is a non-metal. Chlorine is a non-metal, meaning that this atom forms ions by gaining electrons. When you look at the electron structure of chlorine, you realize that to be to have to attain a stable electron structure, it requires one electron. And when you gain that electron, uh, the electron structure of configuration becomes two to eight to eight, and that is a chloride ion. So chlorine forms uh, forms iron forms the iron, which is the chloride ion, by gaining one electron. That is another fact about chlorine. Then lastly, about facts of chlorine which you need to know before interacting with it, is that chlorine is a diatomic atomic element. That to form a molecule of chlorine, two atoms of chlorine have to combine and form a covalent bond between the between themselves to form a chlorine molecule which is called cl2 so whenever you're writing the formula of chlorine maybe when you're writing an equation or when you are describing chlorine the way it exists under usual circumstances chlorine is the atomic so it should be written as cl2 so those are the facts about chlorine, atomic number 17, mass number can be 35 or 37 because chlorine is an isotopic element, it has uh, two isotopes, then electron configuration is 2 to 8 to 7, we get this electron configuration from the number of electrons, remember atomic number again can work as the number of electrons if the atom has not lost or gained electrons, so still an atom of chlorine has 17 electrons and that is how we come up with this electron configuration now this electron configuration can be turned into the electron structure of chlorine whereby the two electrons are in the innermost shell the eight electrons are in the next shell and then the seven electrons are in the outermost shell then chlorine is a group seven element why because it has seven electrons in the outermost shell then chlorine is a period three element because its atom has a three shells one, two, three. Chlorine is a non metal. Why? Because it has uh, its outermost shell consists of elements which are, I mean, of electrons greater than uh, four. When an element contains four or more electrons in the outermost shell, then it is a non metal. If the number of electrons in the outermost shell is less than four, then that element is a metal. So it's a non-metal, and what we know about non-metals is that they form ions through gaining of electrons. Because when you look at the electron structure of chlorine, you see that it requires one electron to attain a stable structure similar to that of a noble gas, in which case it forms the chloride ion. Then chlorine is a diatomic element. This is very important, especially when we are writing equations of reactions involving chlorine as an element. You find the candidates or students writing chlorine as CL without putting the two when they are, they are referring to chlorine in an equation. That's wrong. <coughs> Still about chlorine. Uh, we shall look at its laboratory. Laboratory preparation of, of 
fluorine. Uh, fluorine is prepared the action of concentrated one so you can react uh, can prepare chlorine <coughs> by reacting concentrated hydrochloric acid with potassium permanganate uh, it is also called potassium If you don't use potassium permanganate, you can use manganese for oxide. If you don't use manganese for oxide, you can use lead for oxide. So, uh, the formula for potassium permanganate is KMNO4. The formula for manganese for oxide is MO. MnO2 and that of lead for oxide is that one. So when you react concentrate concentrated hydrochloric acid with potassium permanganate, you will get chlorine as one of the products. When you react hydrochloric acid with the manganese for oxide, you will get chlorine as one of the products. When you react with uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid, with the lead before oxide, still you will get chlorine. But these two, these two reactions here, when these two are used, they are must be heating. The reaction does not take place at room temperature, so heating is required. But here, when we react hydrochloric acid with potassium uh, permanganate, no heating. Is required. This is very, very important because it also has an impact on the type of apparatus that we use. When we are when heating is required and when heating is not required, the apparatus changes from when heating is required to when heating is not required. So we shall be looking at one by one, and we shall begin by looking at preparation from separated hydrochloric acid with potassium permanganate. Uh, let me uh, come again to you. So about the proportion of chlorine, uh, chlorine is bred by the action of concentrated hydrochloric acid on either potassium permanganate. So it should, it should be either potassium permanganate. Another name for potassium permanganate is potassium manganate 7. If you don't use hydrochloric acid, if you don't use concentrated hydrochloric acid with the potassium permanganate, you can use concentrated hydrochloric acid with manganese for oxide, uh, or you can use concentrated hydrochloric acid with lead for oxide. But the most important thing here is that when you use concentrated hydrochloric acid with potassium permanganate, no heating is required. This reaction takes place at room temperature, uh, whereas when you use concentrated hydrochloric acid with either manganese for oxide or lead for oxide, heating is required. Now let us look at one by one. We shall look at uh, Now this substance is crystalline. Uh, these crystals are dark purple. Uh, 
uh, that purple crystals and the conditions the conditions for this preparation is that the acid must be concentrated then no heating is required. In other words, the reaction takes place at room temperature. The reaction takes place at the room reaction takes place at room temperature. No heating is required. Now, the outline of the procedure is that before uh, outline the procedure Uh, remember, uh, we can, during preparation of gases, uh, we can use a flat bottom the flask or a round bottom the flask. The flat bottom the flask is normally used when no heating is required. While when heating is required, you cannot use a flat bottom the flask because it's somehow weak, it can break. So when heating is required, we shall can see later on that we need to use the round bottom the flask. But since here heating is not required, the flat bottom the flask is, is, is used. You know, it's very easy to handle because for it it can sit on the surface, whereas uh, the round bottom the flask is not easy to use. So since no heating is required, there's no need of stressing ourselves with the, the round bottom the flask, which is not easy to handle. Uh, so after placing the crystals of potassium manganese seven in the flat bottom of the flask, you can uh, we are putting the substance the substance which is put first put first in the flat bottom of the flask with the solid. So because this one is a solid. That's why it's the one that is put first in the flat bottom of the flask. Then uh, after that, through the tap funnel, add concentrated hydrochloric acid. So in this case, when you mix, when you add the two, the reaction will take place. Uh, 
やれるっていう。So, as soon as you do this, the father says, and the greenish. The little gas is given off. Pass the gas the river, joke, rule, watch bottle, containing. Water to remove. Traces of hydrogen chloride gas. Another wash bottle, bottle containing, containing. Concentrated in dry the gas. Now, because this, uh, okay, I'm going to draw the diagram so that we can explain this very well. Uh, collect the gas by downward. Delivery because it is denser than air. Now, in our setup of apparatus, we have a tap funnel and then. The flat bottom of the flask. So here, yeah, this is where I place the crystals of potassium malate seven. Then this is concentrated in. Then this one is called a delivery tube. It's connected to another tube, another delivery tube, which is then connected to a wash bottle. The wash bottle can be drawn as simply as this. The 
idea here is that the, the, the first tube dips into the water so that when the gas comes in, it interacts with the, with the water. Then this is a cork covering. Then this gas via another delivery tube. Is made to pass through another wash bottle. These are called wash bottles. You can draw them as simple way as this. You may not make your diagrams difficult and make them as easy as possible. So the idea here is that this gas passes through concentrated, concentrated sulfuric acid, and then after passing through that sulfuric acid, concentrated by delivery. Now this one is a gas jump. And then the tube dips, given a chance to dip into the solution and uh, the gas jump. And the gas comes. Now the gas collected here will be dry. For in gas. So uh, the procedure is here, and then the central apparatus is there. So we'll start with the uh, putting potassium chloride crystals into this one. What for the flat bottom flask? The reason why I'm not labeling the apparatus is that. Uh, when your name is being uh, examined are being marked, then you don't consider those labelings. What is most important are the reagents and then the uh, methods, the diagrams grown very well. Uh, we have to make sure that we don't let any openings thing, because if, for example, you leave this opening here, it implies that the gas will ex escape. So try to make sure that you get rid of any possible openings. Then this one called the cardboard cover. Cardboard cover. Simply to cover the gas. So uh, potassium permanganate crystals or potassium manganese crystal, uh, crystals are placed in the, uh, this flat bottom the flask. Uh, because it's the solid, this substance here is the solid. Uh, then through a tap funnel, this is our tap funnel. You have some concentrated medical acid. Pour it there, then open the tap. When you open the tap, the acid flows into this and mixes with the potassium permanganate. So as soon as the two mix up together, a reaction will take place. So you add the concentrated hydrochloric acid uh, here. No heating required. That's why we have not shown it. As the reaction occurs readily at room temperature, then a substance occurs. Bubbles are produced immediately of a greenish yellow gas. The greenish yellow gas is chlorine gas. So chlorine gas will be formed and to look for where to escape from, and of course to return through this delivery tube, goes, 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 and then goes to the wash bottle, which contains water. The purpose of adding water here is that during this reaction between potassium permanganate and hydrochloric acid, the vigorous nature of the reaction means that some of the concentrated hydrochloric acid may escape along with chlorine and go along with the gas. So if you don't uh, 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 remove that hydrogen chloride gas, that means that the gas which will form as a product will be mixed with an impurity of hydrogen 
chloride. So in order to get rid of that hydrogen chloride, uh, which is formed as a vapor of hydrochloric acid, you have to first of all pass the gas, the mixture, through water. Hydrogen chloride is a very highly concentrated uh, soluble in water. So when you pass the uh, mixture through water, all the hydrogen chloride will remain there because it is highly soluble in water, it will remain there. But chlorine is not so highly soluble in water. A very, very small amount of it will dissolve in water, but most of the chlorine will pass through and continue to the next wash bottle. But the hydrogen chloride, all of it will remain here. Reason being, hydrogen chloride is highly soluble in water. It cannot survive here. It cannot exceed this point. So after that, then for now, after here, we are remaining with only chlorine. Chlorine will continue through these uh, delivery tubes and now we we'll reach another wash bottle. This wash bottle contains concentrated sulfuric acid. Concentrated sulfuric acid is well known as a drying agent. The service is used to dry gases. Why? Because concentrated sulfuric acid is a hygroscopic substance. It absorbs water. It has a high affinity for water. It absorbs water from wherever you put it. And on absorbing water means that it will dry this gas. Because what is making this gas uh, wet is water. And since now you are passing this gas through something which has great affinity for water, it will absorb all the water from this gas. And as by the time the gas passes through the next step, it will be dry. Now, the, other, the last step is the collection step, whereby the gas is now collected uh, uh, in a gas jar, a gas jar uh, by downward delivery. This method of collection of gases is called downward delivery, and this is used for all gases which are denser than air. Chlorine is denser than air, is among those gases that are denser than air. So when you are, uh, when you but uh, when you allow it to drop into this, it will move downwards. Then the air will be displaced upwards. This card cover, uh, cardboard cover is flex flexible. It can allow uh, air, which was originally contained in this gas jar, to escape. So that means that when the gas comes in, all the air water which was inside here will escape. Uh, so uh, that's why we, we pass through... Uh, Water, the gas pass through water uh, to remove the second hydrogen chloride. Then, uh, through with, uh, a wash bottle containing concentrated sulfuric acid, it's simply to dry the gas. Then, collect the gas by downward delivery because it is denser than air. I have drawn this diagram, uh, I've drawn a, 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 a small diagram because my body is not very big. But in your books, try to draw. Bigger diagram. I wanted to have the diagram and the procedure on the same board so that as I'm explaining, we can refer to the diagram and we have successfully achieved it. That now the remaining thing is to look at the equation of the reaction. So the equation of reaction is. Equation uh, potassium permanganate uh, solid equals it's crystalline, then reacts with hydrochloric acid. Of course, there is some water. If it was no water, then it would be a gas. You form manganese to chloride. This is a soluble salt because uh, chloride is soluble except silver chloride and electric chloride. Uh, then we have potassium chloride is also a plus because it is soluble. We also get chlorine gas and then we get water. The next task now is balancing this equation 16 hydrogens. You put an egg there, you put a tip here, and then you because of this two, you put another two here, balance, balance the balance, 
and then your ring is going to balance to have 16 so far so you put a five here to make them two now the equation is balanced and you make sure that after giving your procedure and diagram you also try to balance the equation <coughs> So that's the first method of preparing uh, proin, where you use where you use uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid and potassium among it. Now we are going to look at our next method of preparing uh, proin, whereby in this case we use the concentrated hydrochloric acid and manganese or oxide. Now, I'm not going to change this diagram so much because almost the set of apparatus that is used are the same. So we are going to change only uh, the second reagent. So it was the first reagent was concentrated hydrochloric acid, so we are not changing it. Uh, we are going to change this. This one is now going to be manganese. Manganese for oxide. Manganese for oxide. So this procedure. Now another thing that changes is the type of flask which we use here. From a flat bottom the flask, I'm trying to screen this here for a lot of space, but I know that in your books you have a lot of space, so you can do a bigger diagram. So this is manganese. For oxide uh, here, then because this reaction requires heating, need the wire goes and then it becomes the stand. Then try to show that it's heating. You heat. The other setup does not change. You only change something small. That also helps you when you are revising. That most of the things we need the way they are. It's only uh, we only change two things. Okay, uh, a few things, not only two, but a few things. We change manganese for, from potassium permanganate to manganese for oxide. We change from a flat bottom of the flask to a round bottom of the flask. We don't use uh, flat bottom of the flasks when we are heating because the nature of flat bottom of the flasks is that they are weak. When you heat, you may break it and damage it. But if the surface is spherical, it's not easy to break. It's very strong. Then there is also heating. Uh, so that means that even in our procedure, we are going to change that here. We're going to write uh, put. Now, manganese foxide is not crystalline. Instead, it is a powder. Okay. Put manganese. Manganese. For oxide powder in A in A round bottom of the flask because it is a solid we maintain that through a tap funnel add concentrated hydrochloric acid this time heating is required heating is required as the reaction does not occur you see the reaction does not not occur at room temperature. Does not occur at room temperature. When you hit a farmer sense will occur and the greenish gas will be given off. The other procedures are maintained. The other procedures as we used in the distribution with the potassium permanganate are maintained. Maintained. Just, just as you see here in the diagram. From these other procedures is maintained. So, if you already have the other uh, work, you can use the same work. From here, the next step is the same as the step that we use. When you know this, it will be very easy for you to know that you have you have a tooth in one uh, situation whereby you are hitting two bags with one stone. Another thing that changes is the equation in this case. So we need to just know, note what changes. Why, where is the difference between these two methods of 
arrangement. So the equation in this case is also different, and in this case we have an easier equation, magnesium oxide uh, plus hydrochloric acid, which is concentrated. We get manganese to chloride, manganese to chloride, aqueous, that's chlorine gas, this is the gas, and then we have water. We have water, which is a liquid, balance in the equation, which we have had before, because of this chlorine and the atoms. Then we have the water, we put a two here, to balance the oxygen. And the equation is now balanced. Another interesting thing about these preparations is that in the third method of preparation, where we said that you react uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid with the uh, lead for oxide, the procedure remains exactly the same as with manganese for oxide. That means that this changes from a two in one situation but now a three in one situation whereby you are heating three bags with one stone. The setup does not change much. In effect, when you are uh, looking at the third preparation, we are use uh, lead for oxide with the concentrated hydrochloric acid. The setup is the same as that with manganese for oxide. You only change, let me show you where we change. In the third preparation, we have a preparation where, which I told you at the beginning, preparation from. So, this is the third preparation from con concentrated hydrochloric acid and manganese foxide. Manganese foxide. Uh, here, you only change one thing in the setup, the entire setup. From the second setup, you only change where there was lead oxide, just, just change from where there was manganese, just put lead. 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 The rest of the things are the same. So you see how simple these things can be. So even in the description, just say where there is manganese, just move manganese and put lead. The other stuff remains the same. Put lead for oxide powder in a round bottom first, because it is a solid. Through a tough funnel, add the concentrated acid. Heating, heating, again, heating is required in this one, as I told you at the beginning. Heating is required, and the reaction does not occur at the temperature. Then the further sense, and then we continue with other procedures. Another beautiful thing about this method of preparation is that the equation of reaction when you're using lead for oxide, is very, very similar to that when you use manganese uh, <coughs> oxide. Look at this. The equation here will be uh, <coughs> lead for oxide plus for HCl. You get lead to chloride. This one will be solid, but because of heating, it will dissolve and will be appears. And then we'll have chlorine gas given out. You know, very well that little chloride is soluble, dissolves on heating. And since there is heating, in that reaction, little chloride will be in form of a solution. That's why we're writing objects. Then water will be formed. It's very important these preparations to note the similarity because there are very many similarities. In fact, the most important thing to note about these preparations are the very many similarities in the three methods. That's the most important thing to note about these three methods of preparing chlorine. You need to note the similarities because they are very, very many. After the gas has been prepared, the rest of the work is the same for all the three methods. The first difference is that in the, when you're using potassium permanganate, we use a flat bottom the flask, there is no heating. Whereas with manganese foxide and lead foxide, use a round bottom flask and there is heating. Those are the important differences. So it's very important that we not, we not, we not 
uh, those those differences and then the similarities. Note the differences and the similarities in these three methods of preparing for it. Everything will become very, very easy. Another thing about why chlorine uh, is collected by this and not over water is that chlorine has a, a, an appreciable solubility in water. That's why it's not common, it's not common practice to prepare uh, chlorine and collect it for, uh, using the over water method. <coughs> have 15 minutes. So that's it about preparation of chlorine. So, as I've told you, <coughs> concentrated hydrochloric acid is the common uh, uh, reagent. You react it, you can react it with, with potassium permanganate. And here, use a flat bottom the flask. How many? Plus, no heating is required. Then, if we use, we use manganese oxide, we use around the bottom of the flask. Then, heating is required. Then when you react concentrated hydrochloric acid with lead four oxide, again we use uh, round bottom the flask. And then heating is, is required. Those are the most important differences and similarities in this three methods of preparing chlorine gas. I must emphasize that because it's what we use when we are trying to memorize these methods of preparation. Once you realize the differences and similarities, the work becomes very easy for you. Let's talk about the physical properties of chlorine after preparing chlorine. What are the physical properties of physical properties of, of, of physical properties. These are properties properties without involving chemical reaction. So it is a greenish yellow yellow gas. So it's color, when you look at its color, it's a mixture of green and, and, and yellow. But yellow predominates, the green is slight, yellow predominates. It turns wet or moist. Blue, little mass, paper, red, and then bleaches it. So the blue leaf first part has been blue first of all turns red, and then on continued exposure to chlorine, it becomes white. It's slightly soluble in water. It 
much further yeah. than go. So that's why we say it cannot be uh, perfect. Then it is, in fact, you can use it fairly, fairly, sorry, go. That's the best term to use here. Then it is denser than yeah, yeah, so the water that's why it's collected by one collected over water in its preparation. Though it's not highly soluble, it's just fairly soluble water. That's why we can we can be able to pass through pass it through water. Some of it dissolves, but most of it. Through. So this is the why it is collected by Gaumawadi Uribari. <coughs> it has an irritating smell. Smells similar to that of jik, and it's also uh, a poisonous gas. That's why uh, it is used in water treatment because it kills the bacteria or germ. Why does it kill the bacteria or germ? Because it's poisonous. So poisonous gas. So that means that we have to make sure that we don't get much exposure to this gas. Uh, so these are the physical properties of growing gas. Let's now look at the chemical properties of chlorine. Chemical properties. Chemical properties. Chemical properties of chlorine. Uh, chlorine with a number of substances. The first one is water. Chlorine reacts with water to form a mixture of hydrochloric acid and hypo, hypochlorous acid. And the equation of reaction is chlorine plus water. Get hydrochloric acid, HCl, and then hypochlorous acid. So this is hydrochloric acid. And then this is hypochlorous acid. Now this reaction here uh, normally uh, considered as a reversible reaction. However, even when you write it as a one-directional reaction, there is no problem. Uh, then this mixture of hydrochloric acid and hydrochloric acid is called chlorine water. The mixture not. The mixture 
or hydrochloric acid. Porous acid is more is common way. Common called Marine water. So that's the first property, chemical property of chlorine, and you shall not exceed here. You shall be stopping here, and you shall be continuing from there next time. So today we talked about uh, some of the facts about chlorine. That is a group seven element. Atomic number is seventeen. Mass number can be thirty-five or thirty-seven. Uh, it's a group seven element. It's an element with POD3. Uh, we talked about the configuration being 2 to 8 to 7. And then we talked about its method of preparation, whereby we said that we have three methods of preparing chlorine. One is when we use concentrated hydrochloric acid with potassium permanganate or potassium manganate 7. In which case, we said use a flat bottom the flask and not heating the plant. The second method uses concentrated hydrochloric acid and manganese oxide, in which case we said in that case heating is required. And then they will also use um, a flat bottom the flask. We said that the third method is that you use lead four oxide with concentrated hydrochloric acid and that in that method heating is also required. And that the, the other difference is that use uh, a flat bottom the flask, just like when we are react, uh, preparing for it from marines for oxide. And I emphasize that it is very important that we we make uh, we, we, we make use of the similarities and differences between the three methods uh, to you uh, to, to memorize these three methods because they have a lot of similarities and very few differences. From there we talked about the physical properties of chlorine and we ended with the chemical properties whereby we have only looked at one and the next time we shall over we shall look at the other difference and other chemical properties of chlorine. Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. May God bless you. Each of these leaders, please.